Hi folks, I'm back with another video about the BBC Microbit. Now this time I wanted to investigate music on the Microbit. And if you've done this yourself, uh, you'll know that it doesn't have a very sophisticated music chip, if you can even call it a music chip. It's a, a kind of a buzzer that's just about capable of musical notes. It reminds me somewhat of the old 48K Sinclair ZX Spectrum from the 1980s. But anyway, I set myself the task of trying to create a music sequencing program for the microbit coded in Python. And I had in mind the sort of music put out by the band Tangerine Dream, those repetitive electronic sequences. So I'm going to show you now what I've come up with. Let's reset the micro bit. First of all, there are a couple of questions. The first one is scale. So I can use the A button to change the scale. First of all, we're on C. Never mind about major and minor at this point. Uh, if I press A, it moves up to C sharp, A again, up to D, D sharp, E, and so on through the sequence of musical notes up to A, A sharp, B, and back to C. I'm just going to select C for simplicity's sake. Press B to select. The next question is beat. It allows for a 4-4 beat, which is the default option here, but you can change it also to 5-4. Now, 5-4 is a little bit unusual, uh, but there are certain pieces of music that use a 5-4 beat. The one that comes to mind is the theme tune from the movie Halloween. That's 5-4. And then it, pressing A again will take you to 3-4 and then back to the traditional 4-4 four, four beat. I haven't done anything as unusual as a 7-4 beat uh, because, well, we've only got five pixels across the screen, so that's going to be difficult to represent. So mostly people will be using either 3 or 4, and I'm going to choose 4. The next question is patterns. The number of patterns you want in your song, and it allows 1 to 4. I'll put four in uh, just to show you how it works, although one is probably the most commonly used for the type of music that I'm suggesting. So it now begins. So the tune is pre-filled in with, with the C note. That's a high C followed by three lower Cs. And you can see at the very, very bottom, that's the pattern that you're on. We're currently on pattern two, now pattern three, now pattern four and back to pattern one. Now, you'll see that there are four notes along the top which indicates your currently selected range of notes. If I press A, the selection goes down like this. A again, down one more, down again, and back up to the top. That means that if I, if I press B, the currently selected range of notes will be randomized. I'm gonna show you now. Now we have to get, we have to wait until it goes through the four sequences back to the beginning. Here we go. You see? <laughs> so we're getting somewhere now, but four is a little bit long, so I'm going to reset this again and choose just a, a one pattern song. Okay, here we go. The scale, I'm just going to select C. And again, I'm going to select a 4-4 four, four beat and I'm going to do a single pattern this time. Okay, now this time you'll notice that the dot along the bottom does not move. We just have 16 notes to play with that constantly repeat. So, while I explain the next part, I'm just going to turn the volume down slightly before I get a headache. So, here's the really ingenious part of the program. Uh, when I press B, those four notes are not entirely random. If I keep the micro bit tilted downwards like this, it's hard to see with the angle that I've picked here, but down like that towards the person holding it, uh, the notes that are randomized are always going to be in the major pentatonic scale. 
and according to it's going to be the C major pentatonic if I had picked G it would have been G major pentatonic but it's C major pentatonic because that's what I selected if instead I tilted upwards like this the notes that are selected that the notes that are picked randomly that is will be in the C minor pentatonic if I keep it tilted to the left hand side the notes will be in the minor regular and to the right hand side uh, the major regular. The reason why I included the pentatonic scale is because it's a slightly restricted scale. C major pentatonic allows less notes than C major which means that the result is more likely to be melodic rather than discordant when you hear it. So it's not a purely random mix and match of notes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset it again and I'm going to try and construct a tune. Okay, C. Four four beat. Patterns one and we're going to do the C minor pentatonic. Okay, I rather like the sound of that. So the problem now is how do I get the notes off this into a proper music sequencing program on a real computer? Well, if I hold down A and press B, that's pattern one, the notes will now be scrolled across the screen. And I'm just gonna let this finish. Now there are a few other features that I want to show you. One is if I hold in A while keeping the micro bit tilted upwards, you see, every time the micro bit uh, or every time the cursor comes back to position one, if I'm holding A and holding it upwards like this, it means that the tempo increases and of course I can decrease the tempo by holding it down, tilting it downwards. There we go. Now here's some other interesting stuff. If I tilt it to the left while holding A while the cursor comes back around to the beginning, I move down an octave. So watch what happens when I select this range. very strange sounding music but it is doing what I programmed it to do. I can also increase the octave by holding it to the right. I'll do it a couple of times. Basically it's every time it cycles back to the one position. Now let's try this. It's gonna sound absolutely crazy. <laughs> but it is working. Okay, I've got all the notes written down on paper, which is what you need to do when using this device. Uh, I had the advantage, obviously, of having a recording of it, but you would need to do that in real time. So there are the notes, and I've now transcribed them uh, manually into the GarageBand app on an iPad. So I'm now gonna have a little bit of a play with it. Sounds a lot better than the micro bit, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. 
and that gives you a flavor of what you can do with this little micro bit app when you've got a keyboard or sequencer of your own but you just lack inspiration on a particular day. Uh, I should also note uh, the one thing I forgot to tell you about was uh, how I connected the micro bit up in the first place. You can see here it's just a standard mini jack on the other end of which you can put a pair of headphones or in my case some speakers and uh, it's connected up just Oh, hang on a second. As you see it there, very, very simple connection. This is Micro Games, a book that I wrote containing 12 game making projects for the BBC Microbit and teaching you how to program in Python. But it also does show you how to connect things like speakers or headphones to the Microbit. I'll just show you that briefly now. Page 71, there's the instructions right there. And then later on in the book, Let's see. Yep, there's a chapter on music. So if you'd like to create something like this or something that I haven't even thought of, uh, please check out the book. It's available worldwide at the very inexpensive price of £2.99 for an ebook edition. There's currently no paperback. The idea is it's formatted in A4 so you can print and bind your own copy, just like I've done, or read it off the screen, whatever suits. So please check the eBay link in the description. Um, you can see that I've uh, sold many copies of it to many happy customers. And if this is something that interests you, uh, hope you'll check it out.